everyone, my name is Danielle and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This week we're going to feature Fort by Leader Games. In the game you're playing as a kid trying to get the most friends and you, your resources are toys and pizza so it sounds about right to me. You're trying to build the best fort and collect points along the way. If you get to the highest fort level you get a macaroni sculpture as kind of a trophy and it gives you five points. So we're going to recreate that but Decided to go with the cake approach instead of trying to use actual macaroni because who knows what would have happened there. So it's going to be a vanilla cake. We're going to be adventurous and try a Swiss meringue buttercream and cover it in fondant noodles. Should be delicious. Let's get started. Let's mix things up and start with decorations. Take store-bought or marshmallow fondant and dye it a yellow-orange color. You can use an extruder. I'll put the link below in the description or a good old-fashioned rolling out snake that you should teach your kids. And either way, you're gonna try and make some long cylinders. Use a knife or a pastry scraper to cut them into about one inch pieces. Use your hands to curve it into an elbow macaroni shape. Now take something with a small rounded top. There are fancy fondant tools that help you do this, but apparently I don't have any of those yet. So I went with the top of a paintbrush and it worked just fine. Okay, you're done. Oh wait, you get to do that again and again and again forever. I spent at least two hours making macaroni, probably more. But the nice thing is that this is the only decoration for the cake, so it doesn't feel as bad. Guys, I finally did it. I tried a meringue style buttercream. This cake is topped and filled with a Swiss meringue buttercream. I picked this one since it cooks the egg whites and seems the easiest to master. Start by adding eight egg whites, preferably fresh from the eggs, and 454 grams of granulated sugar to a mixing bowl from your sand mixer. Unlike the American buttercream, this one has no powdered sugar, so it's not as sickeningly sweet. Put the whole mixing bowl on top of a pot with simmering water and make sure that the bowl isn't touching the water. Stir the sugar egg mixture until it's fully incorporated and then about every 30 seconds so this way the heat stays distributed. Keep the mixture there until it reaches 110 degrees Fahrenheit or when you don't feel any sugar grains if you rub it between your fingers. Bring the bowl over to your stand mixer and mix on high using the whisk attachment. You'll probably be mixing at least 5 minutes and closer to 10 until it's able to reach, reach the stiff peak stage, which if you take the whisk off and flip it over, the peak shouldn't move. At this point you need to check the temperature of your bowl. It's likely too warm and would give you soup if you add the butter now. You could do a lot of things to cool it. You could leave it there, you could put the whole bowl in the fridge, or if you want to you could transfer it briefly to a new container and put that in the fridge. I went with the whole bowl in the fridge approach. Once it's no longer warm, it's time to add a lot of butter. Six sticks to be exact. Make sure you're using room temperature butter and preferably unsalted so you have more control over the saltiness of your icing. Keep the mixer on medium low speed. Once the butter is added, mix in two teaspoons of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of salt. You also add some fun orange food gel. Now crank up the speed to high and mix until light and fluffy. Once it seems fluffy, Switch to the paddle attachment and let it go for 15 to 20 minutes until it looks more like American buttercream at this level of mixing. And this is not technically not required, but it definitely made it nice and fluffy. Put the icing in a bag and you're ready to frost. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to my channel for new videos every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. It really helps me out. Thanks! To start putting it all together, you need your cakes. These are yellow cake mixes, but instead of using the recipe, I substitute the milk in for the water to give it a little more structure, but you can use whatever flavor you like. If you use the yellow cake mix, it kind of gives it a grilled cheese look on the inside. Okay, our goal is to have three cake levels that are 9 by 9 inches each. So you could take a 13 by 9 cake and cut off a bit, or use a cake pan that will let you do 9 by 9. This cake is made of one 13 by 9 cake, which was a little thinner, and a 9 by 9 cake that was thicker, but I cut the 9 by 9 in half, so now I have three layers of cake. Use a serrated knife to level off the tops of your cake so they're nice and flat. Put some dots of icing on a piece of cardboard and put on your first cake layer. Cover the top of the cake with buttercream and repeat that with another cake layer. So now you have three layers of cake, two layers of icing. Use a serrated knife to trim the edges. And now you're going to apply a thin layer of icing over the whole thing to give it a crumb coat. Place it in the fridge to solidify. While that's firming up, use some icing to ice six cake style ice cream cones. These are going to be our towers. When you were little, did you have an uh, undying devotion to macaroni and cheese? I mean, I was a fan of the blue box, but Stouffer's is also delicious. Or are you a fan of homemade macaroni and cheese? 
The options are limitless, but all delicious. Use the rest of your icing to put a final, thicker coat of icing on your cake. Attach your towers and you're ready for the great macaroni -ing. That's a thing, right? Start with the tower so that they are very covered in fondant noodles. Then work around the cake so you have a nicely coated macaroni sculpture. This would be a very interesting thing to make with actual macaroni. I'm sure it's possible and you could do some solid macaroni and cheese homemade and stack on top of each other. The question is, would it stay together and how do you get those towers? Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. I hope you enjoyed seeing this little car in the game come to life as a big cake. It was fun. Well, it wasn't really fun making all the macaroni, but it was fun seeing all the macaroni go on the cake and seeing the final product. It really looked like the card and it was super exciting. Let me know in the comments below. What was your favorite snack when you were a kid? Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye!